All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo Yoga 920-13 IKB. So first thing we're going to need is a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. We're going to remove all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like this in the pattern I remove them. So you can see this is in a rectangular pattern like this. So we're just going to remove those screws and put them in that pattern. All right. Hopefully this video helps you out. If it does, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel so that I can continue making these videos for a living. These are customer computers. I don't own them, uh, so keep that in mind. By the time you see this video, I likely won't have the computer anymore. Um, but anyways, other than that, uh, enjoy the video. All right, so let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. Um, the customer spilled liquid on this uh, computer, so what we're doing is we're gonna open it up. And usually you want to remove the battery as soon as possible. The customer turned it on after the liquid spill, which is not good, you don't wanna do that. So um, there's a good chance that this computer might be permanently fried, but we'll find out. All right, so now that we've gotten all the screws out, let's go ahead and try with the suction cup to pull the bottom cover off. Um, this cover actually is coming out pretty easily. It looks like there are some clips in the center, so, but all the edges seem to come out very easily. So it looks like we're gonna have to kind of just wobble this to get it out. I don't know what, what's holding it down in the center, how the clip is held. Um, pulling it up and down is not doing anything so maybe it's something sticky okay there we go all right there you go there's the clip mechanism it's going right between the battery and here you can see actually there's a lot of liquid in it and that's kind of bad there's actually liquid going into where the battery connector is so yeah that's not good I can see already a lot of corrosion here we're gonna try and dry this up and let's go ahead and try and get this battery out. So we're gonna switch over to, it looks like a PH0 or JIS0 screwdriver. And let's go ahead and remove all those screws. Again, you wanna keep all the screws in order. Okay, so we're gonna take that screw, this screw. All right, looks like, I think there's only four screws here. So let's go ahead and remove all those. Okay. Now we've got all four screws out. Let's go ahead and lift this battery up. The connector is right here. You want to be careful. We're going to be basically wiggling this connector to pull it out. Um, if you can, you can use like your fingernails or something and get a hold of this black plastic piece. And you can kind of like push and wiggle it. But this one, there's not much area to grip it. So I might have to just pull on it with the whole battery. So let's go ahead and do that. This is the main thing you want to disconnect before um, continuing anything after a spill happens. So there we go. And actually a lot of liquid got into the battery. That is not good. So there's a very good chance at the minimum this battery is toast. Um, if you need it. Let me see here. There's a lot of liquid all under here. So I'm just going to try and dry this up the best I can. All right, if you need it, the battery model number, let's see here, is right there, L16M4P60. All right, you do wanna check your own computer because sometimes the model might be different. So just in case, it's always a good idea to check your own. All right, so let me show you here, the liquid actually got all over this thing. So you can see water in here, up, all up here. Water's all getting up here. It damaged and corroded this here. Um, this connector is very badly um, corroded. Here you can see that. So it happens almost instantly because the electricity flowing through. Um, if you know like electrolysis and stuff. So here you can see there's a lot of damage in there as well. So basically what we're gonna do, uh, most likely the batteries already the power is already drained from the computer, but it's always a good idea to open up the computer and then press and hold the power button for 15 seconds after removing the battery. Um, this will make it safer to work on and reduce the risk of further damage. Okay, so we're gonna just do that. <clears throat> Again, 
Um, it's probably already drained out because the water just shorted everywhere. Um, but we're going to do that anyway. So let's go ahead now and dry up any more liquid that we see all around here. Okay. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a toothbrush and kind of just scrub the corrosion off. Any liquid you want to try and get it out as much as you can. Okay, I am going to have to take this outside and kind of clean it up. But uh, for the most part, we're just going to kind of start this. So I don't know if you can see, the corrosion is kind of getting cleaned off. Okay, you can see that greenish white stuff. Kind of want to scrub it up and just get rid of it. So the reason this uh, corrosion causes a problem is it creates shorts between components that shouldn't be there. Um, so basically we're just trying to clear out those uh, shorted components so that way the electricity can flow the way it's supposed to. So here you can see after cleaning it up it looks a lot better. And we're just going to go through the computer and basically clean up all the areas with corrosion. Um, if you have, you can also use some rubbing alcohol that will help as well. There's some green corrosion in these pins as well. So we're going to lift that connector up and try and clean in between here. All right. Okay, so I'm going to use some rubbing alcohol here. I have a 91% and I'm just going to spray a little on there and try and just clean that corrosion off a little bit better with the rubbing alcohol. Okay, same thing up here. Um, liquid actually isn't really a problem with computers. It The main problem is if you try and put power through it while there's damage to it. So that's when it causes problem. So as long as you don't have power running through it, you can technically just submerge the whole thing and it's fine. The electricity is what causes it to get damaged much quicker. Okay, so this looks pretty bad. I have a feeling it's not going to be worth repairing, but um, we'll give it a shot. Sometimes just cleaning it up is good enough. Um, it also helps to use some water to clean off the stuff. As you can see, it leaves um, behind a powdery residue. Um, that's basically the rubbing alcohol just um, disperses the stuff. Sometimes you need to use water to kind of help pick up the residue and pull it into a paper towel. So I'm going to clean this up. All right. And then we're going to have to make sure it's dry. I use an electric air blower um, to completely dry the thing out. Make sure there's no liquid left behind. Um, I think the liquid spilled through the keyboard, so we're likely going to have to um, likely going to have to take the entire motherboard out and check underneath. So let's go ahead and try and clean this up. I don't know if these speaker connectors are removable. Oh, there's still a bunch of liquid here. Let's dry that up. So there's still a lot of liquid trapped in there, so let's dry that out. Yeah, this part traps a lot of the liquid. So there's a lot of liquid actually underneath these components here. So I don't think it's going to be salvageable. Um, and actually it looks like I'm going to have to take it apart anyways, because I don't see the SSD up here. So yeah. All right. This is a bad design. Let's see the speaker connector here. I'm not seeing how you would disconnect this piece here. It looks like you would just pop it up, but I don't know. Hmm. Um, I don't want to mess it up. It does look like this needs to be popped straight up. Let's see if I can actually pop the speaker connector out because otherwise I'm going to have to 
leave it all connected. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't want to, doesn't seem to want to move. Oh yeah, okay. So the speaker connector just pops straight up like that. I just got underneath the cable and then twisted this tool to get it out. All right, and let's make sure we can just put that back in. Yep, it goes on really easily. Okay, so let's go ahead and start disassembling everything in this laptop. So we're gonna be taking everything completely out just to see if, because there might be liquid trapped underneath. I don't know, there's some gross stuff trapped in their speakers here, but uh, it doesn't seem to wanna come out. So we're gonna leave that there. Okay, we're gonna continue using the PH0 or JS0 screwdriver. And let's go ahead and take the screws out here. So we've got that one. We're going to get this screw out over here. This bottom corner as well. And let's lift the speaker out. And see if there's any liquid under there. Um, looks dry, so we're going to leave that as is. Okay. Um, and actually, I'm going to clean out the dust from the computer real quick first before continuing. So let me get these screws back in. I'm going to take the laptop outside, brush off the dust, and then use my air blower to completely remove it. All right, so I'll be back. All right, so I'm back, cleaned it up a bit. <clears throat> All right, dried it out a bit more with the air blower. Uh, the bottom cover was pretty bad. I had to use some water to clean it up. Anyways, let's go ahead and go through this. Okay. <clears throat> So, let's go ahead and continue removing components. We're going to remove the speaker here. All right, so I'm just going to get underneath, same like before, with this flat tool. And then I'm going to twist it to pop that up. Okay, hopefully it's going to just pop off. There we go. All right, and then we can move that aside. We're going to have to remove a lot of components from here. So let's see. Let's go ahead and flip this latch up here. Okay. All right, and can we pull this up? It looks like they use an adhesive under here, but it looks like we can get underneath. All right, perfect. Let's flip the latch up on this side as well. Okay, and then let's go ahead and remove this cable. You wanna keep the cable flat, you don't wanna crease it. All right, and there we go. Wow, you can see how badly fried this thing is. All right, it's all discolored from the corrosion. I'm going to try and clean it a little bit with some rubbing alcohol. We'll see if it can clean off, um, but most likely it's not going to work. All right, uh, we'll find out. It's actually not too bad. Okay, let's get some rubbing alcohol on here, and we're just going to kind of clean it off like this. All right, I'm getting a bunch of messages, so... I might have to stop the recording for a bit and then continue afterwards. But anyways, clean that off. All right. It does look pretty burnt up here. I think this cable is actually gone because if you look at this, the gold to the far right over here, it's actually missing some of the gold. So yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Anyways, um, that has the power button on it. That might have been damaged because the customer turned it on. But anyways, let's go ahead and take the screws out that are holding this in place. There's two screws, it looks like. And then we can go ahead and lift this board out. Okay, this board itself... Oh, what is that? There's a black thing here. I don't know if that's melted. Let's try and brush it off and see. Okay, that came off okay. So this board itself, the power button board, actually seems okay. So that black stuff, I brushed it and it looks okay now. I don't see anything burnt. The pins look okay. So we'll set that aside. Most likely that piece is okay. All right, let's go ahead and continue. We got the fan here. Let's flip this latch up. Okay, so flip that latch and let's remove the two screws holding that in place. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and hopefully we can just lift the fan out. Okay, it is somewhat stuck. Um, okay, I think it's attached to the heat sink, so we're gonna leave that in there. 
Um, we're going to leave this connected as well. I guess we're going to just try and clean that a little. Make sure that there's no corrosion connecting the pins. Alright. So we'll leave that. I left that connection. I put that back down. Let's go ahead and start removing the other screws. Okay, so I got that one. Get this screw. The part under here looks pretty bad. We're going to just try and clean it up a little bit and hopefully it will start working, but most likely it's not going to. So let's go ahead and just scrub that up. All right, we'll get this connector out. This is for the fingerprint sensor. Okay, looks like I'm gonna have to use a tool because they held that down with adhesive. So let's go ahead and get in there and pull that. There we go. All right, clean that up. Make sure that's not corroded. Fingerprint sensor, this cable actually looks okay. The pins are all intact. No damage there. Okay, uh, this looks to be the microphone. So we're gonna flip that latch up. Probably should zoom in a bit for you guys. All right, so we'll flip that latch up. Disconnect the microphones. So pull that back just like that. All right, this connector looks okay. There's some powdery residue all over here from this, but can't really do anything about it. All right, trackpad connector as well. Flip that latch up. Same thing, get underneath and pull that back. All right, this looks okay as well. Yeah, that looks okay. Just grab it up a little bit. Okay, we got the LCD LVDS connector here. Oh no, okay. This looks to be burnt, so I think this computer is completely toast. That's too many pieces that got damaged. And if this connector is bad, the screen's destroyed most likely. But um, let's go ahead and just brush it and hope for the best. All right, we're gonna get this connector out as well. Just get underneath and pull it back. Okay. And yeah, the connector is slightly singed right there. It's hard to see in camera, but slightly darker brown, most likely that connector is toast as well. Yeah, the customer should have just brought it to me right away. Um, they were like stopping and wanting to like take pictures of it and everything. So it's kind of allowed the corrosion to spread more. And then also because they tried turning it on. So most likely this is completely dead. All right, anyways, let's try and get the keyboard connector here. The keyboard connector is pretty tight in there. There we go. And I do see some corrosion here as well. So I don't know, let's clean it off. And again, we'll just hope for the best. Clean that off as well. All right, keyboard backlight connector right here. Same thing, flip that latch up, pull that back. This one has corrosion on it as well man yeah there's the too many components have corrosion on it I'm pretty sure this thing is toast but since we gotta take it out anyways for the uh, to get to the SSD we're gonna do it all right there's two more screws here let's get that one out there's another screw up here remove that oh this one why is this screw like crooked? Well, all right, there we go. All right, we got this connector up here. I'm not too sure what this is, but it looks all corroded too. And there's two of them. So these are the wireless antennas, but I'm not sure, oops, I'm not sure why they have these wires going to the wireless antennas as well. Um, so I don't know if somebody knows what those are for. Let me know. I have no idea what they're for. Let's go ahead and flip these latches up and disconnect that cable. Okay, it's not attached, so we're gonna take the cable out completely on both sides, just like this. Okay, this one has a little corrosion on this from this side, 
Um, so we're just going to clean that off. Okay. Again, I think this thing is completely toast. I don't see any way that it's going to be possible that this is going to be working. Okay, let's go ahead and get this cable out as well. Okay, same thing, get the connectors out. It looks like there might have been a tiny bit of um, double stick tape there, but it kind of just came out because of the liquid damage. So this is kind of corroded as well. Just cleaning up the connectors. This one on both sides is corroded, so that's not good. All right, we'll set that aside. Kind of brush that up, try and get the corrosion out if we can. Sometimes just opening and closing this latch is enough to kind of scrape the corrosion off. Looks really bad, so. All right, so I don't know why this antenna just came out so easily, or maybe it was already... I wasn't paying attention, maybe it was already disconnected, but we're gonna remove the white antenna as well. Just get underneath and pull straight up from the tail. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and see about removing the remaining screws and see if we can lift the motherboard out. We're gonna get the wireless card out here. One screw holding it down. Okay, after you remove that screw, we can lift this up slightly. And then I'm going to use the raised bit here to push it back, just like that, to remove it. I'll set that aside. Wireless card doesn't seem to have any liquid damage on it. <clears throat> There's some dust stuck under there. It doesn't seem to want to come out. Okay. And let's get the remaining screws. So we got one screw over here. Okay. And then, oops. The screw stuck to my finger and then we got three screws here so let's remove those three screws of course we are going to have to disconnect the speaker again okay so we'll get those three screws out all right so we got those three screws out and let's go ahead and pop the speaker connector back out again get underneath here and then rotate it pops right out Let's actually also check the speaker down here. I can't really move the laptop too far because of all the screws, but let's zoom out here so you can see. There we go. All right, let's take these two screws out and take a look underneath just to see. And okay, there's a little bit of liquid there. We can just dry that off with a paper towel. Okay, so there we go. Underneath here, I don't really see anything, so guinea pigs going crazy. All right, let's get this back in place and put those two screws back in. And I believe now we have all the motherboard screws and the connectors disconnected, so hopefully we'll be able to lift the motherboard out. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this over so you can see better. Zoom in a bit. Okay. Cappy, calm down. Okay. Okay, so as you can see from the fan lifting, it's actually lifting the whole motherboard up. So let's go ahead and grab the motherboard. Slowly and carefully lifting this. We might have... Oop, we missed one screw here. Okay, there was one screw hidden right there. So don't forget that. There's one screw that's hidden underneath the uh, wireless card. Okay, let's go ahead and continue lifting. I don't know if there's any other hidden screws or screws I missed. We do have to lift it from the left side because the headphone jack is um, protruding out into the casing. Okay, uh, let me zoom out a bit more. There we go. All right, so we're going to just slowly, carefully lift this. Make sure to get all the connectors out of the way. And just keep slowly, carefully lifting, and then we can kind of slide it out this way, and here we go. Here's the SSD. <clears throat> Stupid design. They put it at the very bottom underneath everything. It's an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. Um, I should probably try getting the data off first because there is liquid under here too. Oh, is that liquid? Maybe not. Actually, 
that might not even be liquid it's just shiny um, but there's some corrosion over here corrosion all over this so i kind of doubt this thing is going to be salvageable and the ram is soldered to the motherboard so you can't change it okay let's just clean this all right there's also some corrosion over here so we're just gonna brush that off um, I'm gonna back up their data to another drive first they brought a external drive but they told me not to open it unless the computer doesn't turn on so to be safe I'm gonna back up their drive separately um, so that way I don't have to take it apart twice because that's gonna be annoying um, this stuff whatever it is is stuck on there real good so I don't know what it is it doesn't want to come out Maybe that's not from the same spill. Use this plastic tool and see if I can kind of poke that stuff away. <sighs> yeah, it's like, I don't know what that is. I don't, that doesn't look like water or corrosion. It's like <sighs> some food or something. <sighs> okay, so we got most of that out. Let's go ahead and scrub the rest away. Okay, the rest of the board seems okay, um, but uh, that was a lot of corrosion, so I doubt this is going to work. Anyways, I'm going to remove the SSD now, and then I'm going to clone it over to another drive if I can. Um, currently, it's a oh yeah, it's a 256 gig SSD, so that's not even that much storage. So yeah, I'm gonna pull this drive off. There's just one screw. I'm going to clone this over and then we're going to put it back together and hopefully we can get some signs of life otherwise this thing is completely dead all right so we'll set the motherboard down there we got the ssd out all right so i'm going to try and pull the data and yeah we'll be back reassembling the computer um yep all right so see all right so i'm back turns out the ssd is fried so we're just going to reassemble this. I'm going to leave the SSD out. So let's go ahead and put this screw in here. Okay, um, we're just going to reassemble it and then also see if the computer powers on. I doubt it's going to power on, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this all back together. Make sure all the connections remain on top. Okay, I'm going to do this somewhat quicker than usual because I have a customer outside waiting to get another computer repaired so i kind of need to get this done quick since they're they drove from quite far to get here okay so let's get this all together just like this okay make sure you get all the connections on top i'm using this plastic tool just to pull these connections back on top all right and then make sure everything drops into place looks good okay so let's go ahead now and get all the screws back in I'm gonna zoom in a bit here okay so we're kind of focusing more on the motherboard and let's go ahead and get all these screws back in so we're gonna get the three going down here okay I need to be somewhat quick because my phone battery is low on charge so I'm actually running the charger while I do this and my phone actually overheats when that happens so I need to be somewhat quick. All right, let me zoom in a bit and reconnect the cable here for you guys. Okay, so this is the speaker cable. You wanna just get everything lined up. I know it's kind of hard to see, but let's see, get that lined up and then just push it down just like that. Okay, let's go ahead and get the remaining screws. I guess I'll leave it zoomed in here so you can kind of see a bit better. We're gonna get this one screw down here, okay. Again, there was one oops, there was one screw hidden underneath the wireless card holding the fan here, so we're going to get that screw. Okay, wireless card. Get that in. It goes in slightly at an angle like this. Push it in. All right, and then let it drop down. Get that screw in as well. Okay, then we get the antennas, just line it up. Um, you want to make sure it's completely lined up before pushing it down. The way you know that is once you get it all lined up, if you try and move it around, you can see it stays in place. Then you can go ahead and push it down. Same thing with the white one. Same thing. All right. There we go. Let's go ahead and continue putting in all these screws. Okay. One screw here. 
<clears throat> All right, keep working our way over. One screw over the battery connector here. Okay, keep working our way over. Let's see here. Am I missing anything? I think those are all good. Okay. I think I might have missed something. No. Okay. All right, that's right. This screw here. Okay, let me move this over. Got this one screw up here close to the fan. The other screw below it. Uh -oh. Sorry about that. Okay, give me a second. I need to turn off the audio sounds from my phone. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Hopefully that didn't hurt your ears too much. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this screw back in, the one over here for the fan. Okay, I'm going to move the thing over a little bit more. And now let's go ahead and put this board back in. I'll zoom out a tiny bit. Okay, get the USB port in. All right, get that screw, put that in. Other screw, put that in. All right, now we've got to get the speaker connector lined up again. All right, and then just push that into place. There we go. You can hear it actually clicks. Um, you can actually tuck this cable underneath too if you want. All right, let's go ahead and get this cable back in. Flip those latches up. All right, get that cable into place. All right, flip that latch down. Get the other side in. All right. Put that latch down, good. Let's get these small connectors up here in. Make sure those latches are up. All right, get that in. Flip that latch down. All right, get that cable in. Put that latch down. All right. Don't forget the video cable here. Make sure the latch is up. Get the cable in. Okay. Make sure it's in all the way. Flip that latch down. This latch goes backwards. It's a little bit weird. All right. Flip these latches up. Okay. Get that cable in. latch down, get this cable in, all right, and flip that latch down, okay, then we got all these little cables down here as well, fingerprint sensor, make sure the latch is up, get the cable into place. Okay, there we go, flip that latch down. Other cable here for the microphones. It's a little tricky to get these in because there's not much slack to work with, but uh, just do what you can. All right, get that in, flip that latch down, flip that latch up, get this cable in. This one's being annoying. Come on, get in there. All right, flip that latch down. Make sure it's in all the way. Okay, keyboard connector. All right, get that all lined up and into place. Come on, get in there. Half the cable went in. Okay, I need to pull this back so it can go in straight. Come on, now the other half went in. Readjust that. There we go. 
that's into place. Flip that latch down. Oh, I'm going out of view, sorry. Okay, keyboard backlight connector. Get that lined up. Alright, flip that latch down. Okay, we've got everything reconnected. Now we just gotta put back the battery. Let's zoom out here. How much do I gotta zoom out here? Let's zoom out a lot. Okay, battery and the bottom cover. So we'll take the battery here. We're gonna get it lined up first to plug it in. Pull the connector into place. All right, make sure it's plugged in all the way. Then we can go ahead and drop the battery into place. Okay, there's these little raised parts that you wanna make sure it goes in. There we go. All right, get those four screws in. We'll see if the laptop even powers on. Um, even if it powers on, I don't know, there might be other damage to the computer. So some components might not work, like the USB ports or something, because of how much liquid damage I saw in there and what got corroded. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this all back. Again, the middle has a little clip, so just push that in. We're gonna switch back over to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver and get all the bottom screws back in. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices. If it helped you save a bunch of money, again, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. These are customer computer repairs. So again, um, as mentioned earlier, I won't have these computers by the time you see these videos usually. So keep that in mind. Um, I won't be able to take apart other components to show you. And also, usually I only take it apart as far as I need to for the repair because there are risks involved with taking apart these computers. And if I take apart other components that weren't damaged in the first place and end up damaging them, um, that will be kind of hard to explain to the customer and they won't be happy. So. If you're wondering why I don't completely disassemble all the computers, that's why. Um, but yeah, anyways, you're welcome to stay as I finish putting back the rest of the screws. That's pretty much it. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, um, these laptops, the Lenovo ones, have a external one key recovery button, which allows you to access the BIOS and the boot devices. So for that, you would use like a little needle or a pin. And on this specific model, it's actually on the side here. You basically push that little pinhole button and that would power it up. So, and go into the recovery mode. You would do that while the computer's off. Let's see if the power button does anything. I do see the keyboard lighting up. So it could be their computer will work. As you can see, oh, it just said default device uh, missing. So it's possible I could repair their computer. Here you go. Default boot device uh, missing. So I don't know if the keyboard is all working 100%. Um, most likely I could fix their computer. It's working on battery. I just plugged it in with a MacBook charger right now because I don't have the Lenovo one. But um, yeah, it's possible this computer could be repairable if they really wanted to fix it. Um, I could put another SSD in there and then reinstall Windows, but it seems like right now their main priority is the data. So anyways, that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this spike.